Do it. Why don't you take a look? <laughs> Let's see. I'm going to flip over to Australia. Let's see what they chose to bring here. It is. They did it. Yep. They brought the Mew. And honestly, is this the match? This is probably the time to have brought the Mew. I mean, it's going to work out for them, right? The Mew's one of Mew's better matchups on paper definitely has always been Giratina. Yeah, definitely. Opening hand here is a little tough, but a cram heads would save it. Um, they could thin out the hand a little bit here. They could like play the path and then vacuum like away the pal pad to bump that. Uh, I think they'll probably start with the cram on the pal pad um, to see if they even have to do the vacuum play to like thin it out further. And like that's ball for like one Genesect draw one and hope. Losing these tablets though feels a little bad. It's not yeah. like the end of the world, but. Ooh. They're definitely gonna have to burn. Bad. They're gonna they're gonna have to burn one tablet here now for sure. Yeah. You don't really want to burn two though if you can avoid it. Um. But they might go. They might go all out if they have the other two. If they have the other two tablets in the deck, you really want to keep the three tablets around. To be honest, that's yeah. tough. <laughs> they should check their choice belt as well here. It'd be important if you burn a bunch they're of tablets. Yeah. Everything. I'm sure. Yeah. No choice belts. Was it not there? No. He's going fast. Uh, yeah. James, I think, is the one scrolling here. Yeah, James is in control. Again, yeah, no choice belt. And, and, oh, think, and a tablet prized? We'll see. Oh, yeah, my yeah, gosh. Prized. That is as bad as it gets. You definitely need to, I feel like you need to keep this tablet then. <laughs> like, you need to keep one. So we're just not drawing a card here. No, you can draw one. You can draw one, right? Unless yeah. I'm missing some, but I feel like this should actually be a Genesect. Just go for the draw one. And then if it's playable, oh, are they oh, going to pass? Gonna pass. Interesting. So they're they also really they valuing. don't know the Australians don't know if this is the ogre deck or if this is the uh, Giratina. Okay, but they are getting more aggressive here. Yeah, that's true. Actually, they don't know what this is. It could be ogre. It could be Giratina. That's true. That's very true. Playing the tablets. Oh, so they're hoping it's ogre. Oh it's my <laughs> god! <laughs> this is what Giratina is supposed to do, man. Not the Mew, the most consistent deck in the yeah. format. Well, to be honest, yeah, I mean, this is going to this is gonna be tough. I mean, this matchup is probably a little bit tough with the Spear Tomb as well anyways, though, right? So that's going to be tough. That is fair, um, yeah. I actually wonder if... It, I, I, it, it seems like Team US is treating Tina as, like, their most powerful deck, right? The the win all, it's like a it's a win, right? That's how they basically... Uh, I think that's what Bradner said, right? He said, yeah. should we just go ahead and get a win with Tina? <laughs> yeah. Um, and I feel like then Australia is comfortable getting the Tina out of the way with a, bad, a poor draw... Um, and maybe even getting to save the Mew to pair up into the Chi and Pao still. They still have that potential pair up for the Mew, right? So if the Tina was going to come through and win no matter what, then it almost seems like the Tina, it, like Tina getting rid of Gardevoir would have been probably a worse, if, if, it, if it really is that much of an auto win for whatever Tina runs into, I think <laughs> losing the, or Tina taking away your Gardevoir would have been a little bit worse, right? Yeah, and and Australia does still have control hanging around as well. So that's yeah. another thing they got to think about. Tina has the best control matchup yeah. of any of the decks. Yeah, yeah, they won't have the Tina as an answer for the control either. Yeah, yeah. There's that Spirit Tomb off the rip with the Battle VIP pass. I mean, a, a Judge or an Iono top deck here could still save Australia, but it's looking tough. It's looking tough for sure. We should listen into Australia as they draw their card this coming turn. Yeah, sure. We can tune. I also want to stick around with Australia through the end of the game as well because i want to hear their process on that deck choice sure. like what sure. are they coming to the conclusion we should try and hit that like once more on each team also i was one of the reasons i was hoping australia didn't win the last game is so we could definitely get one or two tune-ins to their deck choice process mm -hmm. um, so we should stick with them through the end of the next one it seems like us here is gonna go very heavily wrap down the tina route though not even gonna consider the cram it looks like but the vip yeah pass, no maybe. cram cram's not like amazing in this matchup i mean a punch of a genesect can turn into a cleanup with sableye at the end of the game potentially yeah this is like the best time for cram here is punch genesect cram yeah. punch genesect is like the punching a mu is okay as well if that one's going to become a mu v max or punching mu mm -hmm. v max is all right because well, then you can but... tina it yeah getting to your tinas is like the most important part um oh heavy on the on the comfies here actually two comfies getting lined up off this battle vip pass yeah looking for an easy time to next turn mirage gate i think right i mean i they're wrecking i think this is them recognizing the poor start from team australia and they just want to capitalize as much as possible most likely yeah i guess I this is hate, like i don't hate the getting aggressive i mean they're going to get to five cards in the lost zone here they just need a culverse next turn and that that gets them the uh the attack yeah, I guess, yeah. That'll get them the loss impact. Loss impact into a Mew V Max doesn't feel great when the Mew player is fully set up, but that is not the case here. 
I was yeah. wondering if they were going to preserve that jet or not with the switch card, but decides to preserve the switch card over that. Uh, honestly, as well, oh, the jet actually is a pretty nice find, too, because you can yeah. gear for the Colvis, and then just you've got it. Uh, well, I guess you need the V-Star still. Yeah, we're short so of V-Star. They need a little bit. They need a little bit. Yeah, not 100% there yet. We're close, though. Very, very close. Top deck of the forest. Seal stone. Let's get back to Australia. Oh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to switch. There we go. Top deck four seal stone. That is the Iono, right? This is what we go for. We need to see a lot of cards. Let's hear what they say. Yeah, let's tune in. Try and get Gotti on the win against Sea Power or Ocean Well, it's a full read regardless. It's a hundred percent read yeah. regardless. It's yeah. not like like saying, well, we, we also want Lax into Lax. Like it's a hundred percent a read. But um only, no, no. if we queue Lax, the only deck we want Lax against is Lax, right? Okay, but the, it's not yeah, like but we the think they're gonna get Lax. And even if it's not that, we have a very good odds of winning. It's gonna be a read. It's gonna be a read later, anyways. Like it doesn't. It's kind of whatever. But okay, what are we doing here? I'm not gonna lie to you. But it sounds like they've already uh, they've already given up on this game. It they're sounded already... like it a little bit. Yeah, we'll definitely tune in at the end of this one as this one actually closes I mean, they out. Could've... If they had found a way to attack with this Mi V Max, it wouldn't have been terrible. And they're close. All they needed, well, they do get a tail, so that makes it yeah. a little tougher. If they had found like either a DTE or a Mu V Max, they already had the switch card. Like they could have. At least on something, but and they still stands. got the judge hits. Honestly, I think they maybe misplayed with that four seal stone attachment. I wonder if that should have gone to the Mew, so they could have put a box of disaster on the Genesect, because the only option right now is lost impact. Or right, that Cramorant is in the lost zone, and their bench is full. Yeah, so like even if you didn't get the attack off this turn, if you had that threat of that that eighty damage coming in to a Tina, if they wanted to really get aggressive. That would have been pretty good, to be honest. So I wonder, yeah. It the... keeps them from being able to get aggressive, honestly. Yeah. And the choice belt's prized, right? The choice belt was prized. Um, yeah. So we wouldn't need to a follow-up Mew towards the end of the game. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't have hated to see it. Because um, now Team USA, if they want to just go aggressive and lost impact here, they can. And they've, I think, got everything to do that, right? This is going to be they seven in it. the loss zone. Ooh, and the Colrus. Oh, but they're debating now. Do they want the key Yeah, instead? yeah, because they've already got it. They might not even need the Colrus. They might think the Mirage Gate's a little better later on. But no, we'll just go with it. I like, of course, always, for the most part, playing the Mirage Gate before the Colrus, right? Get those energies yeah, yeah, out. Yeah. You don't want to see too many of them. Obviously, sometimes you need an energy in your hand still, so you would do it other the other way around. But in this instance, they've already got that grass energy. So now Colrus going to keep the Tina V star. There's a path. How valuable is path when you're taking your opponent's only Genesect out of play and you have Spirit Tomb already? I kind of like the energy a little bit more, but I don't know. And it's they also like already have a path in their hand. Yeah, I, I kind of like the energy a little bit more, especially if you're going to like potentially get judged next turn. Having just more energy in the deck for the gates is the yeah. biggest thing. Um, Being able to evolve mo both Giratinas here is pretty good too, I think. Yeah. Right? Well, in, usually against me, yes, but in this situation, <laughs> it doesn't I don't, maybe matter as much in this instance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the box of disaster would have been pretty good on this Genesect, though. The follow up judge potential knockout that could have been something there, to be honest. If the yeah, and it might have even made Team USA do something weird, like just like fade out the Genesect to break the box of disaster. Like they might not have even yeah. wanted to spinning attack. I guess you want to keep your spirit tomb in play, but uh, shred. yeah, shred shred spinning instead. attack. Yeah, would have hated a spinning attack, but their hand doesn't have that much fall, so like putting that much energy on a comfy would have been pretty bad. But yeah, attacking into a box of disaster here would have not been great. So it definitely would have been tough. Are they debating not evolving to the... Oh, they're out of their switches. If they evolve to the bench, Tina, it gets boss. It could get stuck for a while. <clears throat> that is true. Okay, and that might be what they're thinking about. Yeah, probably want to avoid that. See what they end up going with, though. That's Yeah, they are playing around it. Yep, this is going to be the lost impact. It's two prizes. Probably going to get rid of the yeah grass and the water here. Yeah, two psychics already in the lost zone. Two psychics, really? That. That's what it looked like. I think I think it was at least one for sure. I didn't know if I saw the. the I think it was hit, two. They they got rid of one this turn. Got the Manaphy and the Poke Gear. So the Poke Gear is good off the prize cards for sure. Let's see if they they have the team. judge. All right, <clears throat> Team Australia does find a Genesect. They've got that judge. They need to at least hit this Giratina here, right? Yeah, I think there's they actually an argument. Something. There's an argument to not play the box of disaster because if you judge into a four seal stone plus a fusion, you maybe want to just chill. All right, nothing really here. But I, I mean, I can't see the U.S. side hand. I'm, I'm watching with the <laughs> with what yeah, everyone yeah, else yeah. sees. So it's possible there's not going to be a knockout here. We'll see when we get back over to Team USA, and we're going over there now. Let's see. There is going to be a knockout. <laughs> there is going to be a star requiem. Okay, and it does get around the box of disasters, I believe. Right? That's a box. Yeah. Do they have ten in the loss zone? Yeah, they got up to eleven. They on do this. right. Yeah. They did. They got to eight last turn. Okay. They got to eleven. Eleven. Yeah. Got 11 it. now, yeah. Yeah, we... after the Lost Impact puts two. Yeah, I think it's going to be the Star Wreck. 
Yeah. Yeah. Maybe Pretty it was smart. Forward. Yeah, Australia's been using all of this time to pick their next deck. I wonder, actually, let's tune into US here. Let's see if... Concede real quick. Did they really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wonder if Team US has been doing this. They've probably been talking things through pretty thoroughly. So maybe yeah, that'll be... Listening. What, US? No, Australia, I was thinking, right? Okay, are they at the end here of the game here? Here, their full process. Yeah, they're conceding right now. All right, yeah, let's tune in. Insta ready. Um, wait, Lax... Uh, okay, wait, we haven't decided if we're going first or second yet. We can go second. I, I think, think second. we go second. Okay, no, we go second. We go second. Yeah, go second. I don't, the only time it really matters, I think they're going to lead Tomb regardless, because the odds that Tomb, like, actually matters, and the odds that they, like, the odds they open is low. Tomb is very good against both of our decks, so... Yeah. We're really hoping it's not Lost Ogre, ideally. Yeah, well, I think we can win this I think, match no, no, a lot no, of the time. We can... I do still want to queue Guardi, but look, you, I'm just going to defer to you guys. I think it's Lax. I really do. I'm making the hard read. Yeah, I think I think we read that Lax here. I'll trust you. All right, do we just ready? And yeah, then... type ready. <clears throat> then when my... All right, well, Australia's locked it in. They're locking in control and hoping for the response from US to be control as well. So they're yeah. hoping for that, the, the, the control mirror, where they do have the advantage because they play the Crabominable with the water... Uh, US, US is still debating. It seems like you want to listen in. Yeah, let's go over there and see what they're thinking. Here, like, that's the only bad thing for us. Is if they, well, because, like, if we lose the Guardian, that's, like, low key fine. But, like, if they roll Lax. Or that's what, what's our Guardi Lax matchup? Our Guardi Lax matchup is bad. They have Turo. It's bad. That's the only reason. But, okay, honestly, we throw Snorlax. Like, they win with Guardi, right? That's fine. Then we're going first. We assume that we win with Chimpao going first against Mew, or we win with that, right? Yeah. So then we have Kyogre yeah. and Lax left, right? Yeah. And then yeah. worst case scenario is like, I mean, we just like that's pretty reasonable, right? So I think we I, just say, I think in. I think all three of these decks are like re sure. fairly good against Mew. So I think we, we just like if we get lucky, they hit Mew again. But if not, which probably not. I mean, the other decks just like if that's what we're going with, the other decks just don't matter. We just need to like wash them out, like they like, let them. Well, no, 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 because well, no, not necessarily. This, but... Hitting this or this. Into Chimp or into Snorlax is um is awesome. It's so good for us. Switch. To That's why it matters. Well. Um, see what I'm saying? That's a I have these decks. Here. I have these decks both beating Mew anyway, though. I mean, obviously we, we would rather get it into Snorlax they're, just they're to make close. life easier. We're but... close, I think. Okay, so you guys think we just send Lax? You're down with that? Yep. Uh, I'm down. You're passionate I'm... about it, yeah. All right. <laughs> They did it. They predict that you Australia predicted correctly. Yeah, dang. That's yeah, they crazy. got there. <laughs> that's insane. TBS is, there... is not gonna be pumped whenever they see Natalie type second in the <laughs> in the comms. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think they were discussing. I think I think they discussed it to end up going first, actually. I think. And Natalie oh, for the control like they're predicting they're hard predicting control mirror here. Yeah, I think so. And Natalie wanted to go uh I believe Natalie was saying she wanted to play Guardi here. Um but James and but Brent were, be lax. were pretty were pretty confident in Lax, and she said, "Yeah, okay, we'll just go with that. Then that's fine." Um, and <laughs> as soon as James typed second, all three of the Americans went, "No!" <laughs> <laughs> so, so they know it's the control matchup. Yes, yeah, they're not pumped about that. How was the control going to be for? Um, Team US, what are they going to be able to beat with their control? What is the yeah? That is the, the question here. You gotta as you Mew is beatable. Down, it's tough with the fusion energy. Mew's just tough in general. Got the combination of path and judge. So Team Australia has control, Tina, and no, they have control Gardevoir and Mew left, right? Gee. Control Gardevoir Mew. Team Australia. How is all US going to get this control a win? It might be hard. Yeah, it might it might be tough. Honestly, the, the the what's doing it here is that Turo and Guardi is like the yeah. That's a tough thing. Honestly, to do with. all five of the decks that Australia brought has a good matchup into the US's control deck. I think. Sheesh. Yeah, they're predicting Except, the control. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, US is going first in this one. Like we said, it's gonna be tough. I'm trying to think of an out here besides oh, like they terrible. Are they their Rotom or is it in their hand? I'm not sure. I don't even know if that how much that matters in this matchup. To be honest, I think what they I think actually for Team US. Getting access to Spiritomb is probably the most important thing, right? And so it's you can, too. Yeah, so you can slow them down. Um, but even that, I don't know what you're setting up to like... Wait, do they need to play to the timer win con? 
No, I think Krabamba will, will, will oh, win. Oh, Krabamba will, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah Krabamba yeah, will just win way before any that. Any potential of that happening, yeah. So what are we hoping VIP for pass. here? That, that Team US is hoping for Australia to have prized heavy ball, peonia, Peonias and hand. crab, <laughs> or water energy, right? Ooh, peonia oh, yeah. plus water energy, I guess, would be a little easier. Peonia is in the hand, so... Yeah. There's a no Silene's in there already. Crabominable's in there. Do we see it all? The heavy ball's there as well. The pokey gear <laughs> yeah. told all. Oh, it's we got to see tough. the water energy still. Is there water energy? Let's see. They had the Peonia, though, so I don't know if it's going to matter. The team yeah, shares in the deck. Anyway, it just maybe delays it a little bit. Yeah, so yeah. as control, I mean, obviously, the team that has Crabominable is heavily heavily favored here and probably almost like 99-1 maybe 100-0 honestly like uh, like is there anything that can they get turn one can team, t can team us even do anything about just aggro crabominable that's what i'm wondering here uh I, that's what i was wondering yeah, i don't think so <laughs> like they can just crab from here on out there's no way to remove the energy yeah, they're not going to turn one crab. They don't have quite that good of a start, but... If they had a switch cart or the energy in hand... Yeah, the turn two crab is is coming, and we're already going back over to uh, over to Australia. Yeah, Peonia and Iono, that could get them there, and they are going with the Iono. I think they are just trying to go aggro crab, right? That's what you just do. Yeah. At least they don't have an answer yeah, for it. and Team US has nothing for the crab as well. I saw some people in chat talking about it. Like, there's no... Yeah league headquarters or anything like that i don't even think that um, ever does enough either right like even if you had well this list from australia does only play like two stadiums but that's they can true. always get them back right so yeah oh that's probably just true never do enough you'd have to like silene back the stadium it could but they're just going in the loop at the end yeah yeah here comes the mill yeah we could listen to team us here see what they're see if they yeah. if they have a plan or if they're just they're just kind of checked we'll see Dude, this is crazy. Dude, just penny, just penny. We're just getting just penny, just penny. What? But, yeah, what, why are we scooping? Dude, what we if they're sending Chen? Card, we're we're dude, yeah, we know we're sending Chen Pao next. We have to. All right, fine. <laughs> the honorable penny. I that read was it. crazy, like actually insane. That they had us on putting lax in, dude. <laughs> they said the read was crazy. Crazy. Australia was confident in their read. Um, and they're aggressively sending the Chi and Pow. Um, let's jump over to Australia real fast, see if they are deciding what to set up next. Can they might go Chen, though. Do we might get red on this again. Wait, 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 Chen going first is still a bit sauce, though, for them. I think the Gaudi like, Chen matchup is fine. Like, it's yeah, literally I think Chen we just from last Chen. format. Remember that matchup was fine when we were playing it last format? Yeah, yeah. I think Chen, I, I think Gaudi's fine. Yeah. Gaudi's fine. Well, okay. They're choosing. Are they ever going Lost Ogre? No, right? They're just never going Lost Ogre. Also, our Guardi's favored into Lost Ogre. So like, not that no, no. Yeah. I mean, they're never going, so we probably shouldn't go Guardi. Yeah. Yeah. The US going to the other decks. Wait, but they, they could go Lost Ogre. Yeah, but we're still favored. With Mew? Yeah. I still think they just go Guardi. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. I think they're going Ogre. second both of these times. Yeah. I agree. Like, only I mean, if they play Chen. We're probably going to struggle to get the win with Mew, but... Yeah. yeah. Let's just go with Gotti. Yep, I my Gotti. Are they already ready? No. Um. So we got. Looks like it sounds like Chi and Pao versus. What they offer there? They offer Gardi. Um, they opted for Gardi. It sounded like. Yeah. Um, Which is that's good for Chi and Pao. That's like a favorable matchup yeah. for Chi and Pao. Um, especially, especially when Chi and Pao is going first. Yeah, going first doesn't have the Iron Hands, which I think does make the matchup better. <laughs> I mean, but, yeah, but they've got double canceling cologne plus all four cross switchers, right? Yeah, but you'd still prefer the Iron Hands, I think, overall. Yeah, yeah, Gardi, it's obviously stronger. Um, Guardi does have the counter catcher, but they don't have the Averys, which is the bigger part, I feel like, in that matchup from, like, newer additions to the deck recently that, like, had the bigger sure. influence on that matchup. Um, but, yeah, I think, I think U.S. is going to struggle to get a win with control. I think it's going to be, like, a big struggle. Uh, to get the dub, I, I mean, control can still beat Mew, but I think Mew's better than the Guardi. I think Mew's better than Guardi Turtle against control. So, this well, is like many, a so they play two the Mew deck. No, it's just that they can judge you. That's it. Like they just kill your hand. Well, yeah, I mean that helps obviously, but like you're potentially going to get to a ch point is like Wax can't stabilize out of a judge. Well, no, they're going to KO your Rotom and then they're going to judge you. It's like it's like hard, it's really hard to stabilize. It is possible. Team US going first. They got a really good hand for going second. Let's, my, yeah. uh, my, this is a classic Chi and Pao hand. It's coming down to the stop. <laughs> Here we go. 
classic Chim Pao moment. That's not okay, bad. Okay, not bad. That's not bad. All right, we can go get Chim Pao, right? I think we probably uh, go for the Greninja. You could get Greninja. Yeah. Okay, we could possibly still Ultra Ball as well. The B Barrel Mill is unfortunate, but the deck can recover it. We got some. Um... Oh, are they eyeing up? Oh, I guess you could go Chim Pao and then Ultra Ball for the Greninja, right? You could search two energy out. It's a lot to get rid of. What do you get yeah. rid of in this hand? I One don't... energy from the Chim Pao and then what? I kind of like to just get the Greninja grab, to be honest. I kind of do like that. And maybe we even save the Ultra Ball to go get a Bidoof instead. Well, so if you get uh, if you get the Greninja here, you're not guaranteed to get into a Chim Pao into the active spot, right? But if you get Chim Pao... You don't need it, though. You don't need the Chim Pao in the active. No, but it lets you get a lot of cards out of your deck because yeah. you're guaranteed to get two out right now and two out next turn, right? So you're yep. going to thin your deck much more if you get the Chim Pao. Yeah, that is true. And it looks like they are going for the Chim Pao here. Yeah, they're locked in. And they will go they, to they, the, They've already got two in. Oh, yeah, this is easy. They've already got two. I didn't realize they might like, even not. In their hand as they well. might even not. They might just not go for the Greninja this turn and just get an extra off the Irida with Rare Candy. And then they have the. Um... Do they have their second Beebrail? Oh, they prized their second oh, Beebrail. That is tough. <laughs> that is Wait, tough. They, okay. Did they beat you have... Did they? Uh, there's no Manaphy in this list, right? No, no Manaphy. Which is so that's make a little awkward harder. too because Screamtail can kind of just like run rampant. Oh no, uh, for some reason I thought they needed one more energy to actually make this play work. Now this worked, you should always no, no. go to Greninja here. Yeah, I thought you needed, I thought we were gonna have to discard Super Auto I thought they only had one energy in their hand before they nest balled, but they had two. Yeah. Okay, this is no B Doof down is not great, but not terribly. Here. Also, the Mew start gonna be pretty good for Australia as well. You wanna see that aggressive start. All right, and this hand oh! for Australia. <laughs> We're living on a Mew, baby. No, we're living on a Pokestop. Let's hit it. I okay, love it. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Let's dig deeper. First up. Oh, okay, Ooh. that frees up the Mysterious Tail to find the VIP pass. Oh, Obviously. Wait, we ever see, are we going to see the honorable Professor Turo? Oh, oh my no! God. <laughs> what? <laughs> the Turo. No, Turo, you make the call. You make the call. They don't have Candy Backs turn two. We've seen oh it before. <laughs> it's over, bro. They've got Candy Backs. Well, we backs. know they know. <laughs> There had to be the question there asked that for a second. Do we do the Turo? Oh and my gosh. That is game. Let's tune into US here and hear their end of this their game going into the lap, yeah, yeah, going to the next one. Go. Fucking go. I'm saying, hey, hey, hey. That, that's Z Pal right there, you know? That's normal Z <laughs> Pal match, you know? That's how it rolls. Z Pal, baby. Oh my God. We got, we got Reagan's go, terrible dude. deck out of the way. Let's go. Baby. Dude, that is crazy, man. <laughs> dude, Reagan's my terrible deck one picks are 1 0. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> Let's go. Hey man, we were we were yapping about them starting that piggy mew. Dude, how did they not have another? They didn't basic? do anything. How did they not have another base? After we mulligan, dude, that's crazy. Dude, dude mulligan. Dude, honestly, the top honestly, line. honestly, these games have been terrible for the stream, dude. Two I know, them, dude. Haven't been very yeah. entertaining. Two of them were draw Yo, chat. I'm sorry. <laughs> were games. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, the, the Guardian Mirror was a good game, and then the Kyogre was a good game, but everything else has been terrible. All right, okay, what it comes down to. Let's okay, go. So it's, I think we just do the one that has the best shot against their. Can we never beat their Guardi with Lax? Is it um, just like never? Okay, so both of them have a. Because Kyogre or... has a better shot against Guardi than Lax does. Yeah, I mean, they can draw poorly. I mean, it, it's pretty, it is pretty bad, but I guess they can draw poorly. Um,. Like, like, we really just have no way to kill a Gardevoir, right? Yeah. And Lax is also pretty bad against Guardi. So, I mean, I think that they'll probably send Mew here. Um, because so this is I the think... only time that they get to choose Mew going first or second. Assume... All right, let's tune into Australia. Let's see how they're feeling uh, going to this next deck selection. Yeah, so we're just chipping Guardi again? Yeah. You guys ready? Yep. We going fast? Wait. Wait. No, okay. Type ready. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. All right, we are super ready. Um, yeah, here we are, three to three. Um, and we'll see. So it is the ogre on the U.S. side up against the guardy. <laughs> this is a rough opening hand. <laughs> Man, Sableye is one of the most annoying starters with this deck. I mean, Kyogre's a little bit worse, obviously, uh, but just with Lost Box in general, starting Sableye has always felt yeah. so. They got crappy. a they got a ton of good top decks. <laughs> we'll give them that. <laughs> any nest ball, any VIP pass. Okay, here we go. Australia here, on the other hand, I mean, it's not fine. much to do with this hand. But it's enough to set up for Mirage Step, right? That's what we're looking yes. for. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
Now, so they're gonna be there. Got the bare two. minimum. Yeah, bare minimum, and then we gotta see what uh, what the top deck is here. I feel like, well, if the Iono has to get played though, you know that all of a sudden. Free but it's like, yeah, you want to have these aggressive starts as the Lost Zone player, right? Um, so it's gonna be tough here. All right. Yeah. Australia was debating there where to put the energy. I don't think it really Optic. matters, right? Hey, it's a Comfy. Okay, okay, okay. They have four seals on the hand as well. So any kind of basic Pokemon search becomes a Colrus, and then that can yep. pretty easily get you to that cram. See what we're looking at here. It's live. It's live. Saved. There we go. <laughs> we could even Sigh see relief. We could see a turn one Greninja attack. KO double rolls. I mean, come on, buddy. It's possible. From this start. Yeah, it ain't happening. Yikes. All right. It's still fine, though. <laughs> Losing Manaphy right away. Is that ever that big of a deal? No, I don't think. Yeah, the Scream Tail is like not that big of a It doesn't ever put on that much pressure, I don't think. Yeah. Enough pressure to sure. warrant being scared. Yeah, we might not see a turn one attack here. Three in the loss zone. They're close. They are close. They are literally just a Pokemon search card away, which they have found zero of so far. So they're all in the deck. Well, now with this, they, they dude. Well, they would need to like switch into Comfey, Comfey, and just Pokestop, Pokestop into Nest Ball, switch cards. Like, oh, you're talking about for the turn one Greninja attack? Yeah. yeah that's, I don't think that's happening anymore. I think okay, we're. Okay, okay. <laughs> I think we're just looking yeah, for. They, they we're just looking need, for Cram. Yeah, they just need the Cram Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Cram. There it is. The Cram is here. Barely holding on by a threat. Honestly, and they get the Greninja. The... Hey, they could technically win. Yeah, because they're going to Greninja. Yeah, yeah. If they can find... Oh, do you ever just grab... No, no, you don't no, go for no, it. Because no. if they find Pokestop and stop into the Lost Vacuum... They would so much. Hey, listen, man. I love no, They also like need this. another Comfy use. They would need another They would need another Comfy. Get it in the active. Get out yeah. of the active. Plus, it is but they're possible. They're locking themselves out of the potential by putting both these Pokemon in play. Um, that's Yeah, but that's probably correct. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm <laughs> yeah. kidding. Think of the potential. <laughs> um, one thing that we didn't see actually, one thing that we could, we could actually start to see the snowball pretty favorably in the US's favor. Um, there's no Manaphy found turn one. VIP pass is now not an option. They don't have that many outs to Manaphy uh, going to this next turn while also having to find the Mirage Step Curlia. Also, this is something we saw from Bradner in his last show match against Jake Gearhart, literally using all of the time possible. Yep. Uh, like, oh. That's like someone being really heads up knowing all of the game mechanics. Yeah. Do you go get the... I like putting down Dragonite aggressively in the guard form matchup, personally. Like, I wouldn't hate to see VIP pass for Dragonite, attach for Seal Stone, retreat, Palpat, a Colrus knockout. Yeah, it does play around the potential Iono, right? Yeah, just make um, sure you're... Because you're the aggressor. It could get, it could get vacuumed. There is a chance Ooh, of that. They do play the vacuum. I kind of forgot about that. They're actually going to get Pidgeot here, it looks like. So it looks like they are going for that line, but they're... They don't want to have the, the two prizer get stuck in play. Which is which is reasonable, which is but then like, finding the dragon like there are situations that come up where you're just gonna want the dragonite later and it's gonna be harder to find it. Also, they'd Pidgeot's a decent a attacker lucky. though. They'd have to get the team Australia would have to get a little lucky to find their one of vacuum here. But yeah, I think committing the four seal stone is fine. Being like you don't it's have fine, it. yeah. yeah, I think it's annoying if it happens, but it is what it is. Yeah. See if they also palpat for the Colrus or not. You do kind of want to palpat two Colrus back in or Roxanne plus Colrus, but. Also, just yeah, like I think it's fine to hold it, odds. especially if you're going to put the four seal stone in play. I could, okay, yeah. If you put the four seal stone in play, I think it's fine to hold it. If you don't put the four seal stone in play, I think I'd like to see the pal pad get played. I might just see, like to see the pal pad get played anyways, though, because like if you do get Iono here, you have to find the pal pad. It's got to find a Colrus. Then you have to find that Colrus. Would you rather just have plus one Colrus in your deck? Like if I asked you the question, Chip, if you could play five Colrus, would you? Uh, probably. <laughs> but that's not allowed. Yeah, you're I'm not sure that math 100 percent lines up. That might not be the answer to that. Uh, quite 100 percent the true answer to that question, but. Hey, they're well, playing they're the gonna play. play it. Okay. Here comes that spit. That was almost super scary, though. They they like <laughs> brought it all together just By barely. This, amazing to see that opening hand and then see that this is how their turn ended with this board. That's it's like, sometimes just a comfy away. You're sometimes just a comfy away. All right. Top deck of the Iono leads to just a maybe Iono the Guardian is just Mirage step. Hope for Manaphy here. Manaphy is a huge thing to try to find. Ooh, that is a hand. And the Cresselia for next turn, potentially. Start to go after that Sableye. Let's listen <clears> in. <throat> All right. Team Australia. Alt Rolls double energy. Oh, wait. Yeah. 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 Level pull. Manaphy's prize. Oh! Um, okay. <gasps> I got rolls. Oh, no. How many God of War EX? One EX. Yeah, one EX, one EX prize. You could hear the defeat. Um, do we have any James other basic prize? Uh, additions nope. in deck? Nope. Um, I, no, I don't know. 
No supporters. Uh, rod. No long balls. No. Is that three VIPs? How many VIPs? No. Oh, I, I, I didn't realize you yeah. can't see a Uh, no is DRA candy. Back and energies. Me. Wait, we're down one, two, it's three energies. Yeah. I think it's a... Is that it? Back in deck, I think. All right, so the Manaphy's prize, that's huge, is exactly what you want as the Lost Zone player. The potential for that turn two Greninja to remove the Curlius from play after the Mirage step happens. Um, it sounds like they have a little bit of a prize checking system going down over there. James is shouting out what's prize, and I hear someone typing in the background. <laughs> yeah, I think as the Brent. as the prize are getting shouted out, uh, so they got a little system going down over there. Honestly, we've seen actually I think the the on the US side they've kind of just like switched decks pretty uh pretty aggressively like each time. The Australia side specifically, this is their third time running up the the guard for deck, and they have not gotten a dub with guard for yet. This is still it's a pretty crazy start, as well though. because these are like the best guard of our players, right? Yeah, they got the <laughs> yeah. Best Garver players. Garver's a really good deck right now. They've hit like some fine matchups. Just hasn't Steph's come together. Coming in. Oh, I guess one thing we have to keep around is uh keep in mind as well. There is still the Mawile potential in this matchup, right? They do have the turn. Another thing to think about, yeah. And they would have benched Manaphy here, I'm pretty sure, if they had had it. Um Honestly, after the ooh. Aiden Coos versus Nucci finals matchup, I did a lot of thinking about this matchup. And I almost wonder, like, as Gardevoir, if you can just play it in a way that you I think they have the Stagger. guaranteed. I think they have the Greninja attack guaranteed with that. Oh, yep. Now they definitely have it. I think they have yeah. vacuum into double gate. If the energy's in the deck, though, they've already lost on two energy here. They that actually is true. Might there's not a have few it. in the discard pile. Yeah, I don't know what they prized. Maybe. Yeah. You listen in. Uh, yeah, I can go listen on the other side. See what they're cooking. But since we know that Manaphy is prized, we don't have to Greninja this turn, right? Yeah, but we definitely want to. Like the matchup is. We know, obviously, we want to, but I think that we like Chorus more than. Oh, we also know we prize to Chorus, so like the odds we draw one off the thing or whatever. How do you guys feel? Make sure you don't wings and use Star Alchemy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that would have been. Hilarious. Is it? <sighs> All right. Do we Dude. think we're gonna hit it? We have we have four outs. And then it could also be stopped, but that's not like reliable. Like, we have I think, four. Outs. Yeah. I think four. so. I I genuinely think that getting to 10 faster is probably better and then we yeah, still I mean, might i'm also it. down because we can ninja next turn right we can just ninja next turn because we know they have it the, the man if he prized so even if it doesn't get curly eyes like it's still taking prize cards like we're allowed to just like keep yeah. pace okay i'm so also I'm... down to just hit it out i'm also just down to hit it here like that would also be fire so i'm watching his mall all right yeah so they're debating there do they go get the super rod i think um yeah, did they go with they the, super the stop i think that was something else they were thinking about yeah they get the or stop with the chorus. they're going with the gate before the colors here so they can load up two energy on the greninja now uh, or i guess they go one water with lightning active i would assume oh they didn't put the well, they can active. always pull lightning psychic out of the deck i guess that's another rod to have to commit though oof i didn't get it it's a lot of switch cards though i wonder if uh, kyogre's like okay in this matchup i wonder if you should just get the extra switch card though to be honest that's how I genuinely generally feel about this matchup is that the uh what's it called? It's not great, but they are just gonna go with the crime. Australia is probably gonna be fist pumping here that this is not Greninja. Oh wait, they're not done yet though. They're thinking about going to another comfy here. Yeah, I was surprised to Taking see them. the prize definitely seems better than just flower selecting. I feel like they should have gone water to the Greninja, lightning to the comfy there. Because they, yeah. they had no guarantees. Unless they want to burn another gate now. But I feel like burning that gate now was like not what they probably wanted to oh, do. Oh, they can they can Sableye here. Is there none in their loss zone? Oh, I don't actually know. Is there? I don't know how good. I guess Sableye's okay here. Are they going to. Culver's never ideal. How much, yeah, how much value can they put in the Kyogre? They're going heavily into the value yeah. for the Kyogre. Oh no no, because this leads to the I don't know. They're not they're not running on Kyogre here. They okay. they have the this Greninja is, play. They have the Greninja, Greninja play. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. I missed that for a second. I was like, I was thinking Kyogre when I saw the recycler, but they did get the Greninja play. It did cost two gates though. It is pretty costly, Greninja. It's gonna jump them pretty far ahead. Now, this is what I was talking about though, as the Gardevoir player. So like as Gardevoir, this turn, uh, you know, you're gonna lose two refinement curlius here, right? Not ideal. But if you can just go like candy Gardevoir. Evolve the other Curlia into Gardevoir. Evolve the other Curlia into Gardevoir. And then you can still get a Curlia back with like Super Odd, right? You can get to a board where you have like your four Gardevoirs in play. That's, Everything's kind of yeah. out of range. 
Yeah, you can get there. I mean, that's why being ahead is... And that's literally what Nucci did in the finals of uh, Knoxville. Yeah. Is he got to a board where he had, like, Guardi EX and two Arcana in play, and that was it. So that was all he had in play. And it felt like from that position, it was just really hard for him to ever lose. Yeah, and that's why, like, the the important thing is to, like, be ahead in the prize exchange so you can take turns off where you don't draw a prize card. You can punch with a cram for a turn. And that's why I do like putting Dragonite in play aggressively in this matchup. It's because those turns come up sooner than you think. And if they go Countercatcher, Shiny Arcana, KO your guard for, they've set themselves up for a Sableye or a Cram KO anyways. So, yeah. US is obviously jumping very far ahead here. Iona's going to start to hit. For sure. Also, this hand for Australia. (laughs) It's all right. We have one refinement. The question is, what do you get <laughs> rid of here? They're all good. Everything's good here. Jirachi protects from Sableye. Cresselia is one of your best attackers right this turn I mean, to they don't KO the Sableye. Play because of Mawile. Oh, no. They're both their Mawiles are already gone. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, the Jirachi protecting from Sableye is a pretty big deal. Cresselia as an attacker is really good. And then the, the draw power of Greninja is also important. But if you draw into a Shiny Arcana, you want to be able to candy it for like the play you were trying to say, where you just kind of get everything too, too high of HP for the Lawson player to be able to deal with. There goes Cresselia. No! It's dead. <laughs> no. It's nothing. Absolutely oh, nothing. Oh my gosh. The hand is dead and Sableyes are coming. Or they could just they could ninja get again. again. Yeah, they could get ninja again. You retreat here at least, I assume, right? To something. You don't want to give them the cram option if that's all they have. Well, they take away the Sableye option as well, so they're forcing it all on the Greninja, right? Yep. Wow. Sheesh. And I ooh, I don't actually think they have it. They have a they have no, a they've gate. got an energy in hand as long as there's oh. another is that as long as there's another basic energy in the deck, they've got I think it. There is. it is a committing three total Mirage Gates to using Greninja, but like you go to one prize, right? You always yeah. do this. You win with Boss with Cram. Um, you win with Sableye you can on the Sableye, active. They're active. Yeah. Like, yeah. You have a lot of time to close this out. You still have the potential of like a Pidgeot attack or a Dragonite attack as well. Um, and it is two energy. So we could actually get one on the Sableye as well. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the Sableye. The ever? Mm, that's a good question. Yeah. Sableye can only hit the active here. So, like, I can't kill the Greninja next turn or something like that. But Boss would win with Sableye, but I can see the same way with Cram. I almost like it on the Comfy a little bit better, to be honest. I, I actually don't disagree with you. Do you have, did they ever rip the Pokestop just to keep going through their deck, or do you just you leave it? You might want to hang on to Pokestop so you can guaranteed those. have it next turn. I want to get through those super odds, though, I feel like. Yeah, I guess you give yourself a chance to just have it in play for two turns. Do you ever, uh, what's your odds yeah. of milling Colrus here as well is another question. I mean, if you're only if your deck is just all item cards at the end of the game, I think you're fine with zero colors in the deck. But that is true. Do you just want to leave also, around? Also, when stuff? should this? Yeah, Pidgeot go back into the deck is another thing I was going to ask. I mean, I think if you're going to poke a stop, you want to put Pidgeot back in I think first. Well, I think they're just doing this to burn nest balls. To be honest, um, I don't know how many they want to burn here, or if they just want this extra comfy in play to have more recovery around Ionos. That's maybe. Well, if they're going to use poke stop as well, taking comfy out of the deck is better than. Uh, oh, true. Then the Pidgeot. Yeah, put the Pidgeot yeah, back. Yeah, you'd be like your Pidgeot to be in the deck to potentially get milled because it's not useful anymore. That's true. That's true. Maybe they would have let... Yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess Nest Ball... I, mean, I actually wouldn't hate to see them play this other Nest Ball as well. The Nest Balls just aren't that good at this point. Um, yeah, I mean, there's Iona. two Pokemon left in the deck. I mean, it might be nice to, like, Sableye once, they KO it, you can Sableye again, but, I mean, you're going to go down to just one prize card here, right? Like, yeah. you probably just don't need the Nest Ball. That's fair. Let's see, Now the question is the Pokestop. Like you said, yeah, if you put it in play this turn, you can use it next turn as well. You need very little to win the game at this point. But if you keep it, you guarantee you'll have it next turn. Yeah, I didn't see the boss when they searched through there. Did they lose on or is it in the prize cards? Uh, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. We're, they're going to take two of them here, so they've got a decent shot if it is prized. Let's take a look. Two prizes and n- no boss. It don't know if it's in the loss zone or not. Yeah, I don't remember if it got loss owned. Um, top uh, deck and yep. <laughs> they don't lose technically yet. The so top deck Iona would be pretty good. I think we might see the U.S. taking the lead for the first time here. Yeah, they're gonna go for the roar of the sword. The sword. U.S. needs. Oh an no, wait, they have sable. Escape, oh, no, though, yeah. escape rope wins. Escape rope wins. No, because you can't kill the Zation. Oh, yeah, because Zation came down. Yep, 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 yep. yep, yep my I don't think they have a win condition this turn unless they get their last gate plus a super rod. That's their win condition is gate plus super rod, but we'll see. I mean, 14 cards in deck. They can comfy once if they need to. It depends on how many switch cards they have still. Focus stop is in the hand. I mean, you have they to play the course and start That's playing. Eight. 9, 10 with a flower selecting. Oh, if they know the it. contents of their deck and they've got enough switch cards left, it's pretty decent odds. Ripping with the poke stop first. I don't hate... Just a nest ball that's pretty useless. Any of fine, yeah, any of fine. There's all right, there it is. Yep. Mirage yeah, gets yeah, super yeah. odd. All right. US GG's. closes it out. And that's it. They only have one deck left. They have control. And to be honest, at this point, this is where it doesn't really matter what either team sends up at this point. 
Um, U.S. right now on a four to one streak, by the way. Team Australia started 2-0 and then since then has gone one and four in games. Yeah, the Guardi deck has not been able to get a dub. They have not been able to get a dub. Um, as we close out this game number seven. Yeah, U.S. has to throw up control. And this is where it's like Australia has to win with both of their decks. So it doesn't really matter what they send up here. Um, although they might just want to send up the deck that they think has the better matchup to get out of the way and then kind of go all in on that final that final game. Anytime you play up against a deck like this, Snorlax, it's trying to win in an unconventional way. You kind of have to change your strategy a little bit a little as bit. most decks and play things. You have to respond in an unconventional way. You have to play your deck a little differently than you maybe normally would otherwise. Is that the case for Mew, or do you just go as aggressive as possible and try to bench them out and draw as many cards with your Genesex? Um, I, I mean, you can basically do both things as Mew in this matchup. Like, Judge is really disruptive against the control deck. Uh, you play a high amount of Switch cards, which you want to get into your hand, so that way they, they can't also, be Misfortune Sisters. Do they ever just go for a double Mew VMAX strategy, and that's it? Uh, And just Max Miracle every turn? Mm -hmm. I guess technically you could do that. Um, but though, I mean, honestly, with this good, with the start they have here currently, I guess they could go for it. They are lining up a Genesect, but to be honest, I didn't really ever think about that as an option because usually you have to draw cards to play the game, but I guess their current hand, especially on a cram heads would have let them play the game that way. Um, honestly, I, I wouldn't have hated it. I wouldn't have hated it, but because they would have um, had no cards in their hand as well. They would have only been psychic leaping, <laughs> right? Well, yeah, so to begin can... with, but you'd, you'd draw cards eventually, but the guys, the thing would be like, um, yeah, I feel like that's... I don't know. It just depends. Like, you do two-hit KO the Snorlaxes, right? You get there eventually. Yeah. yeah. Um, actually, you don't get through the caped Snorlax. The caped one will I mean, eventually they could run you out of energy is also the thing. If you're not... Like, they can mix in their Sydneys, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's probably just best or, to just be aggressive. No, yeah, they, the Sydneys. They don't play Flannery, do they? Nobody plays Flannery anymore, right? Is that a card? Is that illegal? Yeah, Flannery's still legal. Yeah, no, it's, it's, I guess that answer, nobody still plays it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what does that one do again? It discards um, the energy from play or the stadium from play. Oh, yeah. Pokey Hawkeye in the chat. Uh, no, because they have Gio Giacomo. Uh, Giacomo. Giacomo. Yeah, Giacomo. Yeah, 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 that's yeah, yeah. that would actually that's yeah, definitely yeah, yeah, the killer. Bad, yeah, that's bad. the killer for sure. It was worth considering for a second, though, because you do like to try and find cheesy ways to be control. Sometimes they think they beat you. But if you just play optimally, they don't actually have a good chance. But yeah, I think you do have to just kind of full full set up. And we do see that commitment here from Australia. Um, and then, yeah, you're going to judge them. You can path if you want to shut down the road aggressively. You can boss KO them. Like, this is a pretty good follow-up hand already here, right? Like, you got the, the judge option to KO the Rotom. Uh, they did lose a vacuum. The vacuums are pretty good in this matchup because it gets rid of the, uh, well, Temple of Sinos. And then it also it gets, gets rid of, rid of so the, much. the tools. Yeah, the vacuums are really, really good. So I think they're almost debating they're trying to not get rid of the vacuum, but kind of had to, yeah. I think. Yeah, really we'll good to them. get rid of the Bravery Charm. Yeah. Um... Can get rid of a four seal stone if they put it down and don't use it right away. Usually, when control puts their seal stone in play, they're going to use it basically instantly. Yeah. This Poke Gear, though, doesn't find much. Yikes. Uh, yeah, this, <laughs> might, it, be, dude, this another, might be. Is it donked? Is it over? <laughs> uh, it might be. Uh, and we're going to game number nine. I mean, to be honest, yeah, I'm happy we're going to the, to the end of it all, but like this. <laughs> It's not guaranteed <laughs> just yet, but it's... I think I it mean, is. You gotta think they have Techno Blast in hand. They have four Seal Stone plus oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They've got four Seal Stone still. Yep, yep, yep. That's that's GG's. Wow. Oh, Temple of Sin. Oh, no, they have the vacuum as well. They literally have everything. And I feel like this build of control is like one of the most consistent decks in the format, <laughs> to be honest. Like, um, What well, spaghetti games, man? <laughs> yeah, this has been interesting. I like us coming down to game nine. But yeah, these have been some quick games. Quite a few of them have been pretty quick. Jeez. And now we'll finally see, um, can the deck that US couldn't win with control, I mean, see what it comes down to, I guess, at the end. I guess you could have not queued the deck up yet. You don't have to play a deck until the last game, potentially. But this is the situation where it's like, the controls come up twice, the guardies come up three times. Neither deck has won for either team, but one of them has to win here, going down into this game number nine, to be honest. <laughs> Oh, no, that's fine though. Zashian. That's a fine starter though, right? That's it, fine. That's fine. They can actually their hand allows them to just like go solo Zashian until I bet you'd probably yeah. put a Ralt in play because the Honestly, Mimikyu not bad, right? And they're gonna get a couple mulligans here too. Yeah, yeah. The Mimikyu will come down, but the Zashian can then the Zashian can retreat, right? Yeah. Actually, do you ever not draw the mulligans there for how good your hand was? Probably not. You, really? you probably like. 
you probably should still always just draw your mulligans. I don't know about that. You had VIP. Pa you only get want to get like one or two rolls here. What if you draw into like Jirachi Manaphy? Like, I don't know. It's something to think about for sure. <laughs> <clears throat> I guess so. I guess so. But yeah, yeah, they're going to. You want to listen in? Let's see. Let's hear how they're going to approach it. Okay. You're yes. right. No, no, no. We battle pass. Okay. okay. Yeah. All good. We're good to go. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Um, okay. No roll to Um, no, no Arcana. I don't think I can't see a single Pokemon. Mew's not yeah. there. Mew's prized. Oh, this is double bad for us. But yeah, it's yeah. not You should be getting um, the Pokemon first. Boss is prized. <clears throat> boss is fine. It's not great. Oh, we have two Rekola. We're fine. Two energy. Oh, we have two energy prized. Two energy? Is it fog? Fog? Yeah. yeah fog. The last card definitely isn't important. Do your basics. Because we can do it with the roll. Get the basics. <laughs> yeah, which one? <laughs> Don't miss. Is it CC? Okay, well, we'll get to C on the roar anyway. Okay. Yeah. Attach, roar. I mean, the thing is, like, yeah. this isn't great against Arvin, but yeah, it's fine. Okay, we're going to do this. But, like, as well, if they if they boss one of the rolls to avoid an attack, we just step. We just step. Yeah, and we're yeah. chilling. This is a good point. Okay, yeah. nice. We could we could also debate if they just bench like a Rotom and do something. We just attach attack. Then if they gust a roll, we step. Yeah, no point playing Ultra Ball. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, they're gonna have this aggressive start here with the Zation. It is threatening a knockout already on this first Snorlax. Uh, of course, Bravery Charm isn't something that's too hard to find, but it's actually like the most aggressive start you can have in this matchup. I think it's opening Zation because usually Gardevoir's not attacking until like quite a bit yeah. later in this matchup yeah this is honestly pretty solid i think as the the guard of our player here that's a lot of that's a lot that's a lot of pokemon search here on this side as well though yeah and they're gonna Ooh, immediately the vip passes pry <laughs> oh well it doesn't really matter though because they've got two snorlax right so they've got one in the active they got two it's in true. hand now now they can just uh arvin for nest ball and i think it's fine yeah i guess i mean you maybe wanted the mimic you to like force the guardy player to play the game a little bit more right? yeah vip pass would definitely be better yeah, I don't know if you put. I don't oh, know they've if you got Nest Ball in hand. Yeah, yeah, but now you can't get four lakhs plus Mimikyu. If you, I don't know how good Mimikyu is in this matchup to be honest, but it does prevent Zacian just swinging over. And over. Oh, they don't even want Arvin here. Oh, were they going for an invitation? They maybe just wanted an aggressive invitation, which what actually kind of I don't read hate. Is that that would have been something? Well, they did draw two Mulligans, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. So actually, I don't hate it. You do need invitation a lot in this matchup, right? So. And it looks like they're trying to be really... They're getting a yeah, Poke they're, Gear they're here. Yeah, they're getting the Poke Gear here. Yeah, they're just going to be looking for Invitation next turn. Yeah, I think they want to, like, at least do this first Invitation before the Gardevoir player has had a turn to reset their hand. So if an Iono doesn't get played next turn, they still feel like it's still pretty good odds. They haven't had no interaction with their hand, right? So, so what do you think about this first... It's always interesting to me as Snorlax where they use their bravery charm initially, right? Because um, you're going to get – one of your Snorlax is going to fall eventually, right? Wouldn't yeah. you rather a Snorlax just fall and then you get value from bravery charm immediately after that? Or do you want to try to prolong it as much as possible? Because, like, either you're going to have to penny to save this bravery charm next turn or you're just going to lose it. Yeah, and then you don't have access to counter catcher yet either. Yeah. To be honest, I'm not too sure. I feel like maybe giving up the first the first Snorlax there does maybe make a little bit more sense. Just let it go down. Yeah. Um, and now you have you have it on the next one, which is basically the same thing. All right, I think they're like we talked about the aggressive invitation. invitation. No invitation. They got the penny though. They had one in hand. Yeah, they'll be able to loop penny loop here for a little bit. Yeah. But yeah, I think yeah, I don't hate the idea of just like giving up a Snorlax here. Or what if you had set up the Pidgeot here? Could you have ever just send up Pidgeot here to absorb a hit? Yeah, almost uh yeah because as gardevoir you can't put those extra energies onto the zashian right you want to avoid uh, it well i mean yeah, it's not that bad it depends like when, when the yeah everything's situational right but generally putting too many energies can lead to um you ever just overload here at station this turn as well just so you can get through the bravery charm so do you attack again do you get penny or what should you thinking about yeah maybe that's something they should have done last turn as well right should they just roared up sword last turn because they had the extra energy in hand i believe as well yeah, the, yeah, just the roar. I mean, hitting does force the penny, yeah, the penny or the KO, right? It guarantees one of those two things is going to happen. And if they're, you definitely would rather than play penny than anything else. Yeah, but you're not scared of invitation this turn, right? You're not scared of no. You're not. You're and not. there's the invitation. They're going to go for it, but they're not going to yeah. find anything. You're going to be pretty bummed about that one. Yeah, yeah. still a pretty looking hand. Yeah. So this means this is going to force an Iono out of uh, Team US next turn, right? They got to reset the hand. Try and put some. And they're gonna lose. This is what I was talking about. They're gonna lose this bravery charm. Yeah. 
Oh, not gonna play the nest ball. I feel like the well, like I said, they're planning to not get Iona Mimikyu to push. Yeah, they could have got Mimikyu and push a Mimikyu on this next turn to force, and then combo that with an Iono, force them to play the game. Yeah, this is looking a little rough. Let's can we listen to what US is saying? Sure. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Oh, they're just well, they're just waiting for this sure is going to be so hard. All right, we'll tune in again when it gets comes back to their turn. <clears throat> they are giving the access to countercatcher here now on the Australian side, but yeah, let's go now. Let's go back over to Team US and let's see what they're saying yeah. <laughs> as they get into their their turn. I guess it makes sense for us to tune in on their turn. Yeah, my bad. They're still completely checked out. <laughs> they're not even. I mean, they're just going through the motion on this one. They do put up the Mimikyu here, and I feel like there would have been some. Um, it does feel like there were some potential missed sequences here. They could have had the Mimikyu in the active this turn. Yeah. Yep. Now they're nest balling for this Snorlax. That would allow them to play an Iono this turn to reset this hand, and hope hope that it draws into those those basic Pokemon that Eric's invitation is better at finding, right? Um, so let's see how Team Australia is going to respond to the Mimikyu. Uh, they do have boss in their hands they could just like take out a snorlax saving your boss is usually pretty good though yeah we can go ahead and uh, tune in get and out see. of a block let's just go ahead and tune in and see how, how they're going to tackle this next they have to come up with something yeah actually can't win we can't get anything trapped anymore we have Tura collapsed and boss in deck like how do we have to yeah. lose this fortune sisters doesn't he doesn't do anything we just always win yeah, yeah. the only card okay. we're worried about is back yeah but like we can't get any basics trapped anymore I mean, we're probably going oh, to step. They're going to the step. But... Like, they still need to switch card up penny this time. I mean, they probably have switch card on hand. But... Are they actually going to be able to load up their bench to the point where nothing gets stuck? Is that going to be that's what the... they're doing right here? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, isn't that? But they can put they put three energy on everything though, right? Huh. Sorry, I was deafening. Well, like they have to put like three energy on everything though at this point. Like slapping isn't enough. They just slap. No, like they can still but they stuck. can evolve these. Yeah, so they have to put energies on everything. I mean, the the Raltzes can just teleportation burst, right? You can just put one energy on those. Yeah, yeah. but the curly the curly is all to become guardies. Oh, yeah, and they got a reversal there. That's an energy they're not going to be able to utilize. Yeah, yeah, that is true. I don't know. I'll, I'll have to see how this breaks down. But yeah, if, if everything is because they do still have two psychic energy in the prizes as well. Yeah, they do have turbo and collapse, so they still have two more outs out. Maybe every time something gets brought up, they're able to just attack with it. And then collapse to get energy back, attack with it, and also Turo get the energy back. What else back. could they have done that turn even? What would have been better than Retreat Mirage Step? Um, they could have got more Ralts down, I guess, would be the only thing. Because those take less energy to do something, right? Mm -hmm. so your bench could have been like... Yeah, it could have just... You could have just... You could have just had Zacian, a Shiny Arcana, and a bunch of Ralts. But yeah. I don't know if that's better. But that would have that would have ended up in a, a board state that's a little bit more... Uh, less, a little less energy reliant, I guess. Um. There's an Iona reset this big hand from US. I, you want to try to do that like on a turn you're taking a knockout generally. Yeah. Well, you also want to do it when you hat like when you draw into Jirachi or Manaphy. And then you like if you have other Pokemon search cards, like you can level ball and ultra ball for the rest of them and put them all in the bottom of the deck. So is this just an Arcana swing into the active here? I mean, you could. They have to evolve a Guardi EX and a Guardi here. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Then the Guardi EX gets countercatchered. Um, they also have the boss on the Rotom eventually if that doesn't get uh Yeah, yeah, yeah. That has to get pennied at some point. Yeah, if that doesn't get pennied. And actually they might just get aggressive for that here. And they are, they're just gonna go get rid of the Rotom right now. This does remove a retreat oh. option, but they have they'll go down to three prize cards left. That might just be enough. Yeah, yeah. You, this is kind of nice as well. You want to capitalize on this Rotom before it leaves play. Yeah, right? you want to like take penny. these two prizes. If you ever can KO Rotom, like you're just making the game that much easier for yourself to potentially win. Yeah, because you're that's uh, KOing one Rotom is the same as having to KO two Snorlax, which one Rotom has as much HP as one Snorlax does when it has a Bravery Charm equipped, right? Yeah, exactly. So you always want to get this Rotom KO whenever you can. Cause especially because yeah, you are you are want to be you want to be a little bit pressed for prize card draws here for sure. Um, All right, when it gets to US, let's hear how they react. Yeah, they did not sound... They There was not much energy over there last time, but yeah, when we switch back over here, 
<clears throat> tuned to the U.S. side of things. See if they They're can come play up with any something. Out they have, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. They will definitely play to whatever else they have. And now is going to be the time where you have to start counter catching stuff up for sure. Yeah. Ghost town. <laughs> We've got nothing on the side of U.S. I don't know if they started talking right as I deafened, but... No, nah, I'm uh, listening still. Yeah, they're just going through the motions. Not a word has been said. Yeah, they're checked. I, th I think they think they're in a pretty rough spot here, for sure. <laughs> they just poke geared into seven supporters. <laughs> <laughs> they go for the Ralts grab here. Um... But they sound they definitely seem pretty defeated at this point. And it's a tough spot. I don't even know if this this is like a, a like a very reasonable situation to make a comeback in, to be honest. Yeah. Um it's definitely tough. We'll see. Uh, now we gotta see what Australia decides to do. That the, here's where the teleportation burst can come in, right? You just attach the active rolts, teleportation burst to the bench. Yeah. Yeah. The guard that's, EX. that's the play to go for here. Um, that's why I'm kinda surprised that Curlier wasn't brought up there. By um well, Curly can evolve an attack. Uh, you want to delay? Maybe I guess as yeah, long maybe yeah, maybe trying to buy yourself some time there for sure. Oh, they got rid of the energy. Ooh. Oh no, you can always guard it there though. You can always guard it to be active. For some reason, yeah. I thought it had to come from hand, but um, that does seem fine here. Yeah, yeah. The bench is just yeah, loaded yeah, up with attackers, time. and also they can keep like rare candy around as well. So the Ralts could be. Well, I guess you're always going to teleportation burst. And you can always collapse away something that has energy on the bench that gets stuck eventually, but. There's the reversal. I guess one of the things you don't want to get caught is the reversal energy, but yeah, yeah, the reversal energy probably makes the most sense to just attach to anything with a colorless attack at some point, right? Um, yeah, put on one. I mean, put on anything to be honest. It works on anything besides the the rolls. Besides rolls, I mean, it could get Giacomo at some point, so you don't want to put it ahead of probably. Yeah, They've already used it depends the Sydney, on how likely so. you think. Oh, what do you think of this? They're going to evolve this other rolls. All right. I mean, That's... is there a possibility that it overstepped? I don't know. See, I, I, they've maybe already done the math and just realized they can't lose. With, with the turtle and the collapse left, it might be impossible for them to lose. That is, Yeah, that with is three possible. prizes left, right? Yeah. Yeah, with three prize cards left, it might not be possible. Because they gonna... can always throw something out of the active. If it gets stuck, they can always collapse away energy from their bench to load them to the active. Yeah. So There's just so many ways. They're going to teleportation burst here. Send up the guard EX, I imagine. Also, that 10 damage is actually relevant for guard EX to then KO the Snorlax if it has a bravery charm. It's true. Um, I assume that's what's going to happen here. And then yeah. the X turn you swing with the Guard EX, take a prize card. Yeah, always run into the Guard EX because if they go to Mimic you, you can retreat, attack with a regular Guardy. Yep. Yeah, because then you get the energy off the Guard EX, which is almost better at that point because then it frees up for more attacking options. But yeah, here comes that teleportation burst. All right, right to the bench. And the Guardy's up. All right, let's see. US. I don't think we're going to tune into the comms. But we'll see if they come up with any crazy play we maybe didn't think of. They're going into the cheer. They're getting Rotom back. And the invitation. Nope, just the boss. Uh, what are they going for here? They don't yeah, even know. Rotom coming back is kind of interesting. I mean, it can eat a hit as well, but it still needs a bravery charm. They didn't even get the boss there. Interesting. They just need to draw cards, I think. And they've got their four Sealstone in hand, right? So I think that's probably partially why we're seeing this. They do have all four Countercatcher in hand, so we're going to see those Curlias start to be brought up. Yeah, I guess that's um, Maybe... I guess there's no more boss on the Guardi side, so you don't have to protect your... The Bravery Charm here. Be a Guardi uh, X Evolve again on the active then. Well... Ooh, okay. Okay, so and they're going like to use that. the switch card. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that, too. So we're not going to see a knockout on this next turn from Guardi, I don't believe. And the thing is, as well, for the Guardi players, they should not extend here, and uh, they this. should not yeah, go for the KO on this, right? They well, should I guess just... they, they could because they do have the collapse, right? Because then if something else gets stuck, you collapse that away. Yeah, but then I don't know that they're far enough ahead yet that that's worth it. Maybe if that was them going to one prize, it would still be worth it. It could get a little sketchy, I think, if they went really hard for this ko they go to two prizes then they get counter catcher they have to collapse away they attack again uh i guess as long as with the next one they didn't go super hard it would be fine right yeah should be all good as, yeah as long as they don't go super hard two times before like actually winning the game 
Yeah, I think all they have to do is like punch here and chill. They're even gonna go ahead and grab the scream tail once again. It probably doesn't matter. It goes with the manaphy in the end. Yeah. One energy left in deck. But yeah, they have the, the biggest thing is the collapse to be able to recover. The energy is a big deal. Um, and then they could even, well, yeah, they could still like go like collapse, vacuum away the collapse, and then rebench like a Rolts. So there's not even an opportunity for Team US to go like replace the collapse plus Erica's invitation. But even if they do do that, there's still a turret left. <laughs> yeah. It's seeming all but hopeless here for Team USA. Australia waking up first thing in the morning. <laughs> Get the dub. Getting dubs, getting paid. Yeah, it was it was a tough start, right? Because Australia started out 2-0. Um, yeah. And I forget what the matchup was after that, but I felt like it was a matchup where it's like Australia a favor, but they drew kind of poorly. Oh, they're going in. They're yeah, getting they, aggressive, they actually, with the vacuum. They're Mew, right? Is that what happened? Oh, yeah, their Mew got donked. Was that it? Was that the first? Oh, this is pretty good here. Vacuum away the... Yeah, just Vacuum be aggressive. away the bravery charm. Oh, they're even going to go ahead and I own. All the counter catchers go into the bottom of the deck. <laughs> yeah, that's actually... This is a good time to do it if you're going to take this knockout, right? Yep. Now they got... And they also conserve their collapse from getting potentially Sydney, which is maybe the, yep. the number one factor there. Also why they definitely did that. a factor. Yep. And now, now they did the play, right? They got the Jirachi and the Manaphy. They're on the bottom of the deck. Or I think one's in the discard pile now, maybe. But there's yeah, no bench space. It doesn't even matter at this point, though. Yeah. This is this one's feeling like a formality, especially with the Turtles still remaining. This is all the energy, though. So they can gust yeah, they Curlia. do need to take some energy out of the, the prize cards here. I think they... Do they still have two energy remaining in their final three prizes? Wait, is this doable? Let's see if they take the energy off they the prizes They have Turo and Collapse, so I don't think it is doable. They got a knockout here. Turo should... Well, the Sonarx could eventually have a Bravery Charm on it, which could make a difference as well, right? Let's see if... They... Hang on. Energy take. Is there two prized? I think there's two energy left in their prizes. I haven't done the math yet, so I don't know if this matters at all or not. There's a Luxurious Cape as well, so that could make talk... knockouts tough. They have the boss. They definitely need to gust here. Looks like they're going to opt for a Countercatcher counter instead. Um, get the four seals done back. I feel like you got to put a luxurious cape on the active here, though, right? Yeah, I mean, otherwise your opponent has just so many ways to. Well, no, do you have to save it for the last one? You can't just. Well, you want to live. They, Living's just important. Oh, I guess could you do? Could you just lose to like Turo collapsed? If you yeah, that's what I'm there? worried about. If you kill uh, cape the active. Or seal stone's coming down. No longer has the right. Because the luxurious the cape does mean you give up two prize cards. So they're gonna do it. Does, does that actually win the game? Does Turo collapse win? They've got Turo in hand. Collapses on the bottom of the deck currently for Team Australia. Let's listen in and see if they close it out here. This last game. Or this last it. one. Gee, oh, the they hold for... Yeah. Focus with the energy. Wait. Do, so yeah. yeah. That so they have one energy star. still in the oh deck. My God. Can we draw the whole deck? Just wait. So we can we draw fourteen? We have research. We oh, oh, we need an ultra ball. No, we need an ultra ball for uh, yeah. We need an ultra Arcana ball first as well. Yeah, for Arcana, how many are we drawing? We're drawing at least ten. Wait, six. No, no, no. Let's actually map out how to do this as well. We need to tour the EX collapse the Arcana. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the easy part. We just need to no, draw no, no. the. Collapse. We, no, no, no. But we also need to manually. We need to manual active. Oh, no. So we just have to keep the psychic. Yeah, we no, have to keep. Why do we? Why do we have to? Yeah, manual? because we, we need to manual. We need a manual. Wait, I'm. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. right. You're right. Holy fuck! I'm okay, okay, so we need an ultra ball. Yeah. Ultra ball. Ultra ball ninja and bit. Yeah. And then start using Arcana. Yeah. Wait, is the Arcana under Akalia? Oh, we just that is a the fucking first. great question. That is a fucking great question. Yes, it is. Wait, we could just <clears throat> scam an extra draw then. Yeah, we scared. We scam two extra draws. Not really. <laughs> not really. Because they turn out. No, no, no we, we're not scamming. Yeah, so they are going for the win here. It sounds like. Um, well, yeah, yeah. Apparently they have they have candies left too though, so they could have candied that Ross into a shiny Arcana as well. But I guess they have they do have the raw attachment that they were talking about. We should just listen seven. in, especially if this is going to be the game winning turn. All right, well, yeah, we can close it out. Listen into the rest. Yeah. To find the research. See, we've got to take advantage of this before they realize that they threw. <laughs> Fuck. Um, refine the, let's just refine the research again. Can we double Arcana? Never. Yeah, I would probably double. I would probably use second Arcana. But can we? Is it possible? No, right? I don't think I would do it. Do we draw all the basics? We draw all the basics. 
I got rid of the research. Do we just level ball pass? Force them to hit Penny? Wait, no, no, I mean, we're definitely going on Connet active here, right? There's no way we're not. No, I don't think we do anything. No way. We're not we're, like we, we can draw four, but it's 50 50 to win. Dude, I don't I think our odds of winning if we do nothing are higher than 50 50. Oh, what do they do need to hit? Do they have a they have penny to remove their They have three penny in deck and they just wrote him. <clears throat> Dude, I don't like this. Yeah, but too far they don't know. They don't know. We yeah, are drawing they... Yeah, we're drawing fifty. I think we pass. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. I think you pass. I agree. I agree. We have to force them to hit Penny and hit a Bravery Charm as well. Consider that. Yeah. All right. And see the line. Yeah. So, but yeah. So the they actually maybe if they didn't put the Luxurious Cape in play there, did they have a good chance of winning there? Because I think they had access to a Bravery Charm, right? Was there one still in the deck? I think there was. Yeah. When they used when there was the Arvin used last turn. The thing about using Silene, so they could Penny this here, and then force Shield Stone for a Bravery Charm. Let's listen to them now. <laughs> okay, let's, listen, let's see if they have. Let's say that any uh, thoughts. It's which is why I think I might as well keep this on, right? Okay, so yeah. what my thought, so what I'm thinking is, is there if they don't, they're gonna hit this for one, for one ninety. Yeah. And and I don't know us, but I guess we have seals down, so it doesn't matter. Okay. We okay, so we, so we have a few. Okay, so we can go. We can Sydney and hope we hit their collapsed. Okay. Um, I, that is, am, I am more about that. that than yeah. I am yeah, so about that. <laughs> the other like the other thing is, can we win? Do we think there's a chance that we win if we don't have this uh, this thing on our active, like this cape on our active? I mean, like, sh so should I have penny it um, to take it away from the, being in the active guy? I'm kind of more down to Sydney. I just want to yeah. Be honest, like be Sydney. We could also hit their re reversal. True, true, true. Which is another energy, yeah. Uh, gear first, yeah. Please tell me Taro's prize, dude. Complete. That's what they're Threat, playing. You do have Sydney and Dak, right? Yeah, it's in the yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. I think it's Arvan. Yeah. I'm not playing Dak. Okay. All right, Chip. They sound pretty locked on the Sydney line. Brandon brought saying, up the penny. Yeah, I know. Brandon brought the penny. They're hoping for the collapse here. They're hoping Taro's prize. They see the Taro. The collapse is in the deck, and I think... Australia's got guaranteed access to the combo next turn. <laughs> <laughs> they just groaned whenever they clicked through and saw the Turo, and John went, that's really great, man. <laughs> the Turo honestly wouldn't be a, a guaranteed win here, though, unless there's a collapse, though. Oh, no. Uh, I guess maybe the KO They can draw their possible. deck. They can draw their deck. Yeah, yeah so. but, they, but they could also still... But if they're hoping Turo's prize, they could also hope Collapse is prized, right? Right, right. Unless they've seen the collapse, but I don't think there would have been a way for them to have seen it. Unless they did most misfortunes earlier. Mm, <laughs> no, I don't think so. But yeah, right. they're going to draw the whole deck here, and I think that is going to do it, right? I... Can they get the energy in the discard pile? If they collapse... Oh, Turo uh, discards it. Turo doesn't take the energy they need with seven. it. seven. Yeah, Turo yeah, discards can. the energy, collapse, discards the others. Yeah, they've got it. I mean, yeah, I think they got it. I'm going to let them do it. It would be crazy if they in. threw at this point, but yeah, we can listen in here for the potential dub. Holy shit, they literally threw so hard. <laughs> True, the EX. They embraced six times. Oh my god. Holy uh, shit. <laughs> Holy fuck, I can't right. believe we won that. Do not misclick the psychic embrace. I will not be. I've trained my whole life. I've played th 3,000 games of PCG <laughs> live and not misclick in this moment. It's so crazy. Oh, let's go. That's so crazy. <laughs> oh my god, they threw it so hard. We literally out prepped them. We bricked three games. Yeah. We literally just out we literally just played better than them. Like we outright played like 10x better than them. <laughs> beat yeah, them in the format. Like we just beat them in the format. We just actually were just better than them. <laughs> yeah, there it is. There the dub. Australia, they're pumped. GG. Alright. How's it going? Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks. Um, in that last game, there, I gotta. I just want to ask. I want to ask immediately. Did they just have game there? Did you guys calculate it out? Did they just have game there if they had not put the cape on the Snorx and they had bravery charm? Yeah. <laughs> yes, they uh, did. I think well, it would have been a fifty-fifty. No, it's they, not. It's, they just have game. 
They're just no, 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 it was 50 50 if we unprize the psychic, I think. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, oh, true. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I think yeah. the issue is that he didn't have the knowledge that we prize psychic, but they probably have to play as if we prize something. Yeah, yeah, but I don't know why they attached cape though. That was very yeah. interesting. Yeah, well, the, I think the cape was interesting the turn before, but then, like, just to stall because they didn't want us to tour with three energy and because then we would win the game. So I think it came down to the second turn where they should have pennied. But the first turn, it was correct. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, there's definitely something better they could have done there for sure. <clears throat> they also retreated into Mimikyu for no reason, which was yeah. very funny. Yeah, so you we did that... also okay. make a mistake with the teleportation, I think. Like, we didn't think we'd get punished, but we end up getting punished in the end for that. I was going to ask about, about the Mirage, Mirage step, step turn, turn as well. As well. Mm -hmm. Is that, Is that some, something that... that... Was that a little too aggressive to put those extra Curlias in play as opposed to maybe having one of those become... that One of those bench spots being a Ralts that can teleportation? No, 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 no. All right, all right, all right. I have played this matchup so much, and I know the line. <laughs> T-bursting is usually not great because then your energy just gets stranded in all these different places. Like, sure. You want to you want to condense your energy so each collapse discards so many. Like your your ideal board is literally to step for three, bench double rolls, and then like you go five energy on Arcana, they gust a rolls, you just collapse the Gardevoir, go five energy on another Arcana. That's like the ideal line. But yeah, we t bursting in the middle of the game was a mistake because we needed to free up the energy for, to potentially go five on an Arcana. All right, all right. Uh, my next question would be for this format uh, in Pokemon. <laughs> Uh, how do you guys feel about it in general? Because I know Brent's played a lot of Hearthstone, right? I don't know if the other you others have played Hearthstone before, but Brent, you played a lot of Hearthstone, right? Yeah. And that's like always Conquest or Last Year of Standing. But like, yeah. well, how, how do you feel about yeah. it in Pokemon? I think it's okay. The only issue is just having a clear distinction of what an archetype is. Yeah, yeah. I think and that, after that, I think it works well. Okay, I think we roughed it out. And then, this was, yeah, this was a very interesting format to prepare for. Yeah, it was definitely very, very fun preparing for this. Like, um, <clears throat> you know, like we had this whole like meta going on, um, you know, like the whole counter Charizard thing that you probably ended up noticing from their list. And then we realized that counter Charizard was so obvious. Like, I think it's yeah. it's definitely really interesting. There's like massive metas going on within everything. So I really like the format personally. Yeah, it definitely, <clears throat> is. It definitely is interesting. So you guys did a lot of preparation and then ended up with... Arceus in your pool of decks is that because you excluded <laughs> like once you went through like the list and you're like we're excluding Roaring Moon we're excluding Maridon we're excluding Charizard did Arceus was like is that how Arceus got into the the pick all right I'll, I'll, I'll go no no let me go let me go I'm the person who decided okay. we play Arceus all right uh, yep yeah. so um as you probably know the Mike Fouché stats Arceus was the <laughs> highest winner deck so I played Arceus and I'm like damn this deck is kind of just the greatest deck of all time uh so yeah, after playing Ark for a few games, we kind of just tossed Ark in the list in the uh, the lineup, and it never got cut. We caught like we caught Charizard and we caught Chen Pao throughout that. Um, but yeah, I mean like the the Charizard matchup for us is like an auto win, which was really nice when we were trying to target Charizard. We ended up going away from that in the end, but um, yeah, I mean all the matchups were really solid for Arceus, and obviously auto win against uh, Block Lux is really nice as well. <clears throat> the deck, the deck is is pretty solid, and it is pretty solid. Then it's just not. Yeah, Makani. so did you right away have that uh, win con of the Squovet? timer in mind yes. like when, yeah if you knew if you knew you were going to play against snorlax that's like how you were going to win the game yeah when yes. we, when we started possible. the queue we just like the, the plan was to defer to james and just don't comment on anything <laughs> yeah because the plan was to go as fast as possible yeah and they realized after they were already down four minutes <clears throat> yeah yeah they, there was a point where they realized and we tuned in and they were like well maybe they prized it <laughs> and yeah it was not prized as well that was there <laughs> John was like, I'm down to just click concede. And Isaiah was like, no, and we're going to play. They played like four more turns. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. That's dope. Um, well, I don't have any more questions. Shift, did you have any questions? Uh, I had something just a second ago, but it has escaped me now in this moment. But yeah, congratulations, guys. Super sick uh when oh i was gonna add, yeah i remembered so once you saw the deck lists from both teams was there any deck that you felt like uh was gonna that you guys chose to bring was gonna have a hard time being able to beat something that they had on their side definitely right, Mew. Mew. Mew was gonna be the hardest yeah we were worried about Mew getting swept i think it was Mew, and then the rest were fine like god would probably beat the next hardest one which isn't that hard like it's basically going even yeah, the Gardevoir, Gardevoir one is just to play the game simulator. 
the Gardevoir <laughs> thing was pretty interesting uh, because you guys had some pretty bad games with Gardevoir in this series. You got Definitely. donked twice, I think, right? Uh, yep. It was, and, and it was also like looking at your crew, right? Like you guys are the Gardevoir players. So I, that was something like the chat was like, <laughs> someone said something about like the four, like the three best Gardevoir players against these <laughs> just Americans that uh, the, the Tina enjoyers over on the other end and the Gardevoir players just can't come away with the win. What, uh, hey, what Brent's ended up, what was, was there? Yeah. Was there yeah, any... I'm on that team. Yeah. Brent's yeah, on the sure, Tina sure, enjoyer sure. side now. Yeah. But so was there any, um, like, did you find yourselves getting discouraged by, you know, you guys are so good with the Gardevoir deck and it just like was not coming together? Yeah, that was me. <laughs> These guys are in the God Off. I was trying yeah. to get them out of the God Off because they were so depressed off me. VIP, VIP's too, <laughs> the, the variance too high. God Off was a terrible deck. It always bricks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty rough at that point, but, um, is yeah, that, like we we definitely knew all our decks are pretty decent against Lax, so <clears throat> yeah, so always had a chance. One last question, because like so in this format, it's a little bit different. I guess like two ways you can kind of tackle it, right? Because like they brought Spiritomb in a lot of decks, so they could corner something like Mew, and then yeah. on your end, you still chose to bring the Fusion Energy in Mew, but you don't know if they're going to bring Spiritomb in anything, because like for Spiritomb to be good, they basically have to go up against Mew, I guess, or Control. Yeah, that's um, something that... we kind of talked about in the pre-show because, like, you chose to take like your Snorlax list just like hard loses to Giratina, right? Like, you don't yeah. have the Sinnoh, you have no yes. chance, right? Uh, but like with the Mew, you still kept the spirit, the the spirit two answers in there with the Fusion Strike energies. So, what is the thought process there? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go. I'll go there? on this one. I'll go, I'll go ahead. Right. So, I think the the main thing is we're just trying to have well-rounded decks overall. Um, it, it's really important that we don't get a deck targeted. So like, for example, so obviously we could get, get a deck targeted with Mew with the tombs, but realistically the thing about Mew is we can always opt first. Um, like this, it was like the third game. We just send Mew going first. We can always usually get Mew going first. So even these matchups, like we tested the champ our matchup last night, all these matchups, are even with tomb and like the Tina matchup as well, are really fine if you're going first. So, um, like <clears throat> overall, it was just trying to create really well-rounded decks. And so we excluded the decks that weren't as well-rounded. Okay, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Because, yeah, even if you did play, like, the Sinnohs and the Snorax deck, you're still going to be unfavorable against Tina. So, but it can be yeah. other stuff still. Hmm. It's not like a regionals yeah. where we have to beat Tina. Like, right. we, yeah, we just don't have to. <clears throat> all right, all right. Well, I guess all my questions. Chip, you have anything else? No, I'm good. All right, well, I'll give you guys, guys. Yeah, give you all a second to shout Thanks out your here. stuff, you know, where people can find you, coaching, content, whatever that whatever that might be. So go ahead and go first, James. Oh, uh, yeah, YouTube, James CX. My Twitch is James CTCG. Um, so you can probably find me somewhere there. Oh, uh, yeah, that's all I got. All right, Natalie. Uh, yeah, my Twitter is Natalie M and then four nines. Um, shout out to Cherry Collectibles for being a great place to get cards and. Uh, if you want to see stuff, I write a lot about Pokemon, so if you want to see that, go on TCG Player. All right, and then Brent. Yeah, so twitter.com slash wet underscore goose, and then I I also do coaching, and yeah, shout out Cherry Collectibles as well. All right, sounds good. That sounds good. Well, yeah, thanks for doing this. I appreciate it. It was a great time. Congrats again on the win, and uh, yeah, I guess I'll see see you guys at EUIC. Thank you so much, Azul, for running it. We really appreciate it. Of course. Congrats, yeah, this guys. was really great to play in. All right, have a good yeah, one. Thank you. See you.